hello everyone welcome in this video i am going to discuss about two problems so the first problem is the reaction of this aryl silane with acid chloride in presence of alcl3 and second problem is the reaction of trimethyl silane methanol with the base so what kind of products you will get in these two organic transformations if we observe carefully these two substrates in these two reactions having a silicon atom which is directly connected to carbon so that means these two compounds comes under organosilane chemistry before going to discuss about this concept in this problems let us know what are the products you will get in these two reactions the first reaction where the reaction of this aryl silane with the acid chloride in presence of alcl3 which gives you azylated product the azylation takes place at its opposition that is the answer for this first question and the second one is the reaction of this trimethyl silyl methanol with the base that is triethylamine which gives you silyl ether so in the first reaction the azylation and second reaction the silyl ether preparation from the alcohol you are observing so let us start with the first problem the first problem is the conversion of this aryl silane to azylated product before going to discuss about this product formation in this reaction let us know about the organo silicon compounds if we understand this organo silanes or organo silicon compounds then it is easy to understand the product formation in that reaction what is organo silicon compound so the silicon which is directly connected to carbon so these kind of compounds are called organo silicon compound if you observe carefully the silicon is less electro that is less electronegative than the carbon the silicon having electronegativity 1.8 and the carbon has 2.5 since the carbon has more electronegativity than the silicon so the silicon gets positive character and this carbon gets negative character that means the silicon is more electro positive than carbon so the polarization of this organo silicon compounds generally gives you the silicon which gets positive charge is susceptible for the nucleophilic attack right nucleophilic attack so what we have understand here is the silicon always electrophilic in this organo silicon compounds and the connected carbon is a carbenium or nucleophilic and these organo silicon compounds this silicon has high affinity to form bonds with the oxygen and the fluorine that means the silicon oxygen bond and the silicon fluorine bond are more stable and they are very strong they are very strong so silicon has good affinity to form the strong bonds with the oxygen as well as fluorine this is also one important point here if we compare the bonds strength between carbon and the fluorine and carbon and oxygen the carbon fluorine bond has 485 kilo joule per mole so this is the bond energy between these two atoms and carbon and oxygen bond has 336 kilo joule per mole whereas this silicon oxygen has bond 368 kilo joule per mole and this silicon fluorine has 582 kilo joule per mole so that means if you observe here the silicon fluorine bond is the strongest bond so that means silicon has the highest affinity to form a strong bond with the fluorine and as i mentioned the silicon is susceptible for the nucleophilic attack because of the presence of vacant d orbitals present of presence of vacant d orbitals in the silicon makes the nucleophilic attack onto this c 
silicon. So what we have understand is the silicon gets positive charge and the connected carbon gets negative charge. So these organosilicon compounds generally they are stable. If you consider their stability, they are very stable by alpha carbonium and beta carbocation. So this is very important point. So they are very stable with alpha carbonium and very stable with the beta carbocation. That means if you have a silicon which bonded to carbon, suppose if it is connected to another carbon, so as we know this silicon has a partial positive charge because it is less electronegative than the carbon. So that's why the connected alpha carbon always gets carbonian character because it is negative and this is stabilized this silicon is stabilized by a beta carbocation beta carbocation so why this organosilicon compounds are stabilized by alpha carbonium and beta carbocation let us come to the alpha carbonium stability so to rationalize the stability of this alpha carbonium we can understand that there is a formation of p pi d pi bond p pi d pi bond between the silicon and the connected carbon so this p pi d pi bond model will rationalize the stability of this alpha carbonium with this silicon for example the silicon which is having d orbitals d orbitals The carbon which is having here p orbitals the overlapping between these two carbonium and the silicon positive silicon makes the alpha carbonium more stable more stable so this p pi d pi bond model can rationalize the stability of this alpha carbonium there is another phenomena which is latest latest phenomena which is provided by scientists that means where the silicon organosilicon is stabilized by alpha carbonium so earlier we have given a model that is p pi d pi model but most recently the stabilization of this alpha carbonium because of the because of the the empty sigma star empty sigma star anti bonding orbital the interaction of this empty sigma star empty orbital of silicon with this carbonium so this is the reason generally this organo silicon they are stabilized by alpha carbonium so this carbon which is having electron rich will be stabilized by donating of this electrons to sigma star empty sigma star sigma star anti bonding orbitals of silicon which stabilize this alpha carbonium so this is one reason the another stabilization factor is the silicon is generally stabilized by beta carbocation so how it is stabilized by beta carbocation you can see because the stabilization interaction between the SIC SIC bond see there is a SIC bond which is already formed the sigma bond and the empty p pi orbital empty p pi orbital of this beta carbocation that means sigma pi conjugation occurs here because of this sigma pi conjugation generally this beta carbocation is stable so silicon is stabilized by beta carbocation for example so the silicon already already formed a sigma bond with this neighbor carbon so this is actually sigma bond and this is alpha carbon and this is beta carbon so this beta carbon is stabilized by carbocation because it is getting 
positive charge so now what happens the field sigma bond the field is silicon carbon bond so generally makes stabilization of this beta carbocation so here what you what you have observed here sigma pi conjugation so that means sigma bond of this silicon carbon will stabilize this beta carbocation so this is the very important point here that is alpha carbonium stability and beta carbocation stability of this organosilicon compound for example if we extend this stability to organosilicon compounds for example if you take vinyl silicon this is the best example vinyl silicon for example if you have vinyl silicon vinyl silicon so generally we can write like this so this vinyl silicon the silicon always gets stabilized by alpha carbonium so this is alpha carbon and this is beta carbon so this beta carbon gets always positive charge so because of this property generally this vinyl silicon can interact with electrophiles can interact with electrophiles and forms electrophilic substitution reactions generally alkenes undergo electro electrophilic addition reactions whereas vinyl silicon will give electrophilic substitution reactions that means the substitution of or replacement of the silicon which is electrophile with another electrophile gives you substituted vinyl silicon that means your vinyl silicon will trap this electrophile and gives you a substituted vinyl compound later the removal of this silyl group will give you vinyl silyl so here you can observe the stability of this alpha carbonium and stability of this beta carb beta carbocation when you have alpha carbonium which generally traps this electrophile if you consider allyl silyl allyl silyl so in this allyl silyl there is alpha beta gamma carbons but this alpha carbon is not here that means uh, the car alpha carbon there is no carbonium but this beta carbon can get a positive charge and the gamma carbon get a negative charge so that means indirectly here this silane compound not only forms alpha carbonium it can also stabilize gamma carbonium so alpha carbonium stability beta carbocation stability and gamma carbonium stability we will observe in this organo silanes so when you treat this allyl silanes with the electrophile again the electrophilic substitution reactions you can observe so there is a substitution of one electrophile with another electrophile takes place this is all about vinyl silanes and allyl silanes whereas if you come to whereas if you come to allyl silanes come to allyl silane the same concept you can apply here for example if you have allyl silane when you treat with this electrophile what happens as we mentioned this silane generally stabilized by alpha carbonium and beta carbocation so when you treat this allyl silane generally this alpha carbonium will trap this electrophile and followed by the last of the silane gives you a substitution electrophilic substitution so if you observe wherever the silane present that was substituted by electrophile so that means here ipso substitution of the electrophile takes place so what is happening here if you observe carefully so this is the benzene
so this is a bond between sigma bond SIC SI carbon bond and this is electrophile and this beta carbocation generally it is stabilized by this sigma pi interaction if you observe here you have a vacant p orbital here beta carbocation so this is one and the filled SIC bond so it is a sigma orbital so there is a sigma pi conjugation generally stabilize this beta carbocation so that means aryl silanes also stabilized by alpha carbonyl and beta carbocation so what we have observed here wherever the silane present that is replaced exactly with the electrophile at its opposition that is the reason suppose you can observe here there is another possibility where you can also trap the electrophile from other position for example this electrophile can trap from this side so that you may get a positive charge here so the same beta carbocation you will get but only thing is there is a problem of this overlapping so you will have here a vacant p orbital and this is orthogonal filled c that is silicon carbon sigma bond so that is the reason here the overlap of these two is not possible that's why organosilans generally undergo this kind of mechanism and gives you the electrophilic substitution at its position so using this you can solve our problem for example we have methyl and SiR3 so when you treat this with the acid chloride in presence of ALC3 you are exactly getting the acylation at ipso position so what is happening here the acyl acid chloride and the ALCl3 when you treat each other generally it produce a azelium ion azelium ion azelium ion which is an intermediate reactive intermediate so when you treat this RLCLN with this azelium ion what happens so this silica is stabilized by alpha carbonium to attack this function followed by the nucleophile attack onto the silicon so the loss of bond gives you the ipso substituted product so this is all about aryl silicon that is the reason you are getting you are getting an electrophilic substituted product at ipso position when you treat this aryl silicon with an electrophile coming to the second problem in the second problem we can observe there is a conversion of trimethyl silyl methanol in presence of uh, base to silyl ether okay that means alcohols are converting to silyl ethers in presence of a base so generally this reaction is called a rearrangement reaction that is called brook rearrangement it's called brook rearrangement so what is brook rearrangement Group rearrangement is the migration of silyl group. Migration of silyl group from carbon to oxygen. So migration of silyl group from carbon to oxygen. oxygen. So this is called Brook rearrangement. Generally, it is anionic rearrangement. Anionic rearrangement. So here the migration of this silyl group from carbon to oxygen takes place like one two position so it is a one two migration so these migration generally promoted by thermal conditions or photochemical conditions or you can perform these reactions under acidic conditions or 
basic conditions. So this is called Brooke rearrangement. So Brooke rearrangement generally there is a migration of silyl groups from carbon to oxygen. That means indirectly uh, silyl methanols, silyl alcohols converted to silyl ethers. So what kind of mechanism involved in this kind of rearrangement? For example, let us take this trimethyl silyl alcohol. When you treat this with the base, with the base, so what happens? The base will abstract the proton from the alcohol. Base abstract the proton from this alcohol and forms alkoxide. Alkoxide. So this alkoxide intermediate acts as a nucleophile and this alkoxide nucleophile attack onto this silicon so that this electron shift onto the carbon now this generated carbonium so this generated carbonium will be protonated will be protonated and forms silyl ether silyl ether so simple so first the alcohol is reacting with the base this base abstracting the proton and forms the alkoxide and this alkoxide acts as a nucleophile and this nucleophile attack onto this electrophilic silicon so that the bond electron shift onto the carbon and forms carbonium so this carbonium will protonate by base and becomes acylyl ethers so let us take our example that is diphenyl methanol that is substituted diphenyl substituted trialkyl silyl methanol when you treat with the base so this base is abstracting the proton and forms a carb alkoxide alkoxide this alkoxide acts as a nucleophile and attack onto this silicon and forms a carbonium so this one will protonate by the base forms our required product coming to the stereochemistry